we've got an incredibly exciting topic to discuss, one that could have a massive impact on your financial future. We're diving deep into President Biden's social security promise, including a jaw-dropping $2,400 increase for all eligible beneficiaries. But that's not all. Folks, there are two more game-changing updates you need to know about in SSI, SSDI, and VA payments. The big news, the $2,400 increase in payments for eligible beneficiaries. President Biden's administration has unveiled a comprehensive plan aimed at providing substantial financial relief to those who rely on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and VA payments. We'll dissect the nitty-gritty details of who qualifies for this increase and how it's set to roll out. But wait, there's more. We've got not one but two game-changing updates to explore. Welcome to Money Matters, your go-to channel for all things stimulus check updates and Social Security. In the complex world of Social Security benefits, it's crucial to shed light on the potential financial assistance available to eligible parents with children who have autism. The Social Security Administration plays a pivotal role in determining eligibility. Defining a child as disabled if they are under the age of 18 and have a medically determined physical or mental impairment. This definition serves as the cornerstone for evaluating whether financial assistance can be extended to the child and their family. However, the scope of Social Security benefits isn't limited to just parents and their children. A fascinating twist emerges when considering grandchildren. Even in cases where grandparents are beneficiaries of Social Security, specific conditions dictate that their grandchildren can also be eligible for benefits. When a grandparent retires, becomes disabled, or, regrettably, passes away, there's a possibility for the grandchild to receive these valuable financial benefits. To qualify for these benefits, certain criteria must be met. In particular, the child's parents must have either passed away or be classified as disabled. Alternatively, the grandparent must have legally adopted the child. These conditions serve as pivotal determinants of eligibility, ensuring that the benefits reach those in genuine need. Delving into the historical aspect of Social Security adds depth to our understanding of this critical program. The journey began on August 14, 1935, with the signing of the Social Security Act. This landmark legislation birthed a three-person board responsible for overseeing the program. Each member of this board held an equal vote in the decision-making process, with one of them designated as the chairman. These early structures set the stage for the development and administration of Social Security. However, significant changes were afoot. In 1946, the Social Security Board underwent a transformation, giving rise to the Social Security Administration, SSA. This marked a significant milestone in the program's history. With the establishment of the SSA, a single commissioner, Arthur J. Altmaier, assumed the leadership role. This transition not only streamlined the administration but also laid the groundwork for the modern Social Security system that millions of Americans rely on today. Understanding these eligibility criteria and delving into the historical context of Social Security is essential. It equips individuals and families facing various life circumstances, including those with children on the autism spectrum, with the knowledge they need to navigate the complex landscape of financial assistance. Social Security is not just a government program. It's a lifeline that has evolved over time to provide vital support to those in need. When you're considering remarrying, it's crucial to be aware of how this might affect your SSI payments. SSI is a need-based program that takes into account the income and resources of an individual or, in some cases, a couple. If both you and your new spouse are SSI recipients, your payment rate will shift from the individual rate to a couple's rate. This means that the combined income and resources of the couple will be considered when determining the benefit amount. This calculation involves deducting the couple's combined countable income from the federal benefit rate and then dividing the result equally between the two of you, with payments issued separately. Moving on to SSDI, there are critical factors to be aware of that could lead to a potential loss of benefits. Earning a substantial income is one of them. If your earnings exceed a certain threshold, which is typically set at $1,040 per month, or $1,740 for individuals who are blind, you might risk losing your SSDI benefits. The program is designed to provide support for individuals with disabilities who are unable to engage in substantial gainful activity, so substantial earnings can impact eligibility. Another factor that can impact your SSDI benefits is the improvement of your health. If your medical condition significantly improves to the point where you no longer meet Social Security's criteria for disability, your benefits may cease. Social Security reviews cases periodically to assess whether individuals continue to meet the disability requirements. It's essential to stay informed about these thresholds and health considerations to maintain your eligibility and benefits. For our brave military service members who have been injured in the line of duty on or after October 1, 2001, there's a provision that may provide relief. SSDI applications for injured service members can be expedited. This means that the processing of your claim will be accelerated. 
ensuring that you receive the support you need promptly during your recovery and rehabilitation. Understanding these nuances within the realm of social security is crucial for making informed decisions that can have a significant impact on your financial well-being. Whether you're considering remarriage, managing your income, or dealing with disability, being well-informed is the key to navigating these complex systems successfully. We all know that the SSDI Benefits Program is a vital safety net for those dealing with disabilities. But sometimes, the urgency of the situation requires faster assistance. Let's explore the circumstances under which you might qualify for expedited benefits. One critical scenario that could warrant expedited benefits is when you find yourself in a position where you're unable to afford essential resources like food and medicine due to a lack of financial assets. This situation highlights the immediate need for financial support, and understanding how to expedite your SSDI claim can be a lifeline during such challenging times. Moreover, another dire need situation arises when you're on the verge of eviction or foreclosure, or worse, when you lack stable shelter altogether. The threat of losing your home or having nowhere to go is an urgent circumstance that necessitates prompt action. So, how do you go about initiating the process to expedite your SSDI benefits? It starts with writing a well-crafted dire need letter to the Social Security Administration, SSA. In this letter, you'll need to eloquently convey your situation, providing clear and compelling reasons why expedited benefits are absolutely essential for you. The key here is to be thorough, sincere, and to emphasize the urgency of your circumstances. But it doesn't stop there. To bolster your case and provide tangible evidence of your dire need, including any relevant documentation is crucial. This might involve attaching eviction notices, foreclosure documents, medical bills, or any other pertinent records that support your case for expedited benefits. These documents serve as concrete proof of the challenges you're facing and can significantly strengthen your request. One of the most pivotal stages in this appeals process is requesting a hearing from an administrative law judge, ALJ. Acting swiftly is vital because, as statistics show, early appeals have a significantly higher chance of approval. While there's no guarantee of a favorable outcome, your proactive approach can make a substantial difference in the final decision. Let's talk numbers for a moment. The approval rates for SSDI appeals hover at around 45%, while denials account for roughly 35%, and 20% end in dismissals. These figures underscore the importance of persevering through the appeals process. It's a substantial opportunity to present your case more comprehensively, address any discrepancies, and ultimately secure the benefits you rightfully deserve. To maximize your chances of winning your SSDI appeal, we strongly recommend seeking the assistance of an experienced attorney who specializes in SSDI cases. These professionals possess an in-depth understanding of the SSDI system's intricacies, which can be complex and challenging to navigate. They know how to construct a compelling case, gather relevant medical and vocational evidence, and represent your interests effectively during the hearing. Having an attorney by your side can significantly increase your chances of a favorable outcome. Thank you for joining me your go-to channel for all things stimulus checks and personal finance tips. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.